Tonight, a major IT outage shuts down computer systems worldwide. Good evening and welcome to this special edition of ABC News. I'm Jeremy Fernandez. Companies and government agencies worldwide are tonight in the grips of an unprecedented computer shutdown that's affecting banks, airports, telecommunications, supermarkets and small businesses. It began about 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and the impact is widespread. Flights are grounded, payment systems are down and some healthcare services affected. We here at the ABC are also operating at a reduced capacity along with other media organisations and we're unable to bring you our usual 7 p.m. news so thank you for bearing with us as we take you around the country to our reporters standing by with live updates on events as they unfold. We'll get to the cause of this outage in just a moment. But let's begin with the massive disruption that's taking place tonight. Jamie McKinnell is standing by at Sydney Airport. Jamie, how are things looking there tonight? Good evening, Jeremy. Well, there, there have been huge queues to get through the security screening area here at the Sydney Domestic Airport for most of the afternoon. Now, while things might have come down a little bit here, the things uh, that seem to be peaking in terms of the queues happened around 4.30 in the afternoon. There were points in the afternoon where this queue snaked all the way through this departure hall. Now, initially, the flight information screens, which we can usually see behind us at airports, were just showing a blue screen, and that was creating confusion for passengers who were arriving and trying to work out what was happening. About quarter past five, those screens came back on and there was a small cheer from people queuing to get into the airport. Now, in a statement, Sydney Airport has said that a global technical outage is impacting some airline and terminal services. And it said while some flights are leaving and arriving, customers have been told to expect delays and allow for more time. About 45 minutes ago, there was an announcement here at Sydney Domestic Airport of a list of about 12 uh, cancelled Jetstar flights for all different locations in Melbourne, Brisbane, the Gold Coast, Cairns and Adelaide. And staff here have been hand handing out bottles of water, although for the most part through the afternoon, uh, the passengers have been very patient and just have been trying to work out what's been happening. Jamie, what are people who are travelling tonight and tomorrow being told to do? Well, the passengers who have been affected by those 12 cancelled flights have been told through the PA system here that they should head home and that they probably won't be travelling. They, they were also told that they can get a, a flight voucher refund uh, from Jetstar. So in terms of uh, what to do if you are flying tonight, probably the safest thing to do, Jeremy, will be to look for information from your specific airline because it appears that some airlines are dealing with the issues differently to how others are. Jamie McKinnell at Sydney Airport, thank you. Let's go to Parliament House in Canberra now, where Stephen Jedgetts has been following today's developments. Stephen, an emergency government group is meeting tonight. What are they saying about the cause of this crash? Well, that's right, Jeremy. Now, the first thing that the government wants to stress is that this does not appear to be a cyber attack. And they also want to stress that, at least in the face of it, that critical infrastructure is still working fine. So, for example, the triple zero line, as well as things like the energy grid, are holding up pretty well. So that's the good news. But, of course, the Prime Minister is aware that this is causing great anxiety. He's put out a statement saying that he understands many Australians are concerned about what's happening and he's working with the National Cyber Security Coordinator to try and respond to, to the issue and to understand exactly what's caused it. And tonight, as you mentioned, there is a meeting of state and territory officials with federal officials, as well as representatives from a host of different industries which have been impacted by this outage as they try and plot the best way forward. Stephen, give us an understanding of just how widespread this is tonight. Well, as you've been reporting, Jeremy, this is very widespread. It's airports and airlines, but also banks and telcos, major retail outlets, even casinos and universities, as well as, of course, media outlets, including the ABC. So this is very significant. And there is no indication of exactly when it will come back online. The government is hopeful that a fix might now be coming through from the, uh, from the, the provider in question and that that might allow things to be rebooted. But 
there's no guarantee of that. And then on top of that, of course, there are other anxieties. It's a reminder of just how networked Australia is and therefore just how vulnerable it is to an attack uh, or an outage like this. And then, of course, on top of that, there is a worry here in Canberra that cyber criminals and other malicious elements may look to take advantage of the chaos that we're seeing right now. So plenty for the government and industry to worry about as they try and grapple with this unprecedented problem. Stephen Jedgett's reporting from Canberra. Thank you. Triple Zero services nationwide tonight are appearing unaffected, but healthcare services more broadly are reporting problems. Victoria Pengilly is at St Andrews Hospital in Brisbane. Victoria, how widely are health systems there being affected? Well, Jeremy, we know at least several large private hospitals across Queensland are being affected by this outage. We know St Andrews Hospital, Wesley Hospital and also Ramsey Healthcare, which own around 20 facilities across the state, are being affected. Now, Ramsey Healthcare, they've sent us a statement. They say that they're assessing the current situation and enacting any contingency plans and trying to ensure that it does not affect patient care. Now, look, this system is affecting uh, computer systems which use micro Microsoft, and that means that staff are having to turn back to using pen and paper to process and admit patients. But at the moment, it's not affecting patient care at all. Now, look, staff I've spoken to say that they seem to have the situation under control. Things seem to be moving a little bit slower than usual, but it doesn't seem to be chaotic scenes here yet. For good news, we know that public hospitals in Queensland are not being affected by this outage at the moment. But look, it is a very fluid situation and things might change in hours to come. One thing that's in a lot of people's minds is the state of triple zero services around the country. Are they being affected? Look, Jeremy, it's a really good question. We know that triple zero calls emergency services are not being affected by this outage. So that includes ambulances, fire and rescue and police. And that's really important to stress. If you need to call triple zero, your call will get through and it will be answered. But look, this is a very dynamic situation and we'll keep you across the details as the evening comes on. Jeremy? Victoria Pengilly reporting from Brisbane. Thank you. Well, alongside the chaos caused by this outage, there's still a great deal of confusion about what triggered it in the first place. To bring us up to speed on what we know so far, we're joined by national technology reporter Ange Lavoie-Pierre. Ange, where can we trace this outage back to? That's the big question, isn't it? Mm. It is, uh, from what I can tell, useful to think about this, for now at least, as two separate issues at two separate companies because there's no evidence yet that they're linked at all. So it could just be the world's worst coincidence. Uh, and wouldn't that be something? So Microsoft's issues started first, reporting problems from 7 or 8 o'clock this morning, Australian Eastern Time. Uh, and Crowdstri CrowdStrike, of course, a, a cybersecurity company, uh, their issues seem to begin much later, at around 2.30 in the afternoon, so five, five hours down the track. So naturally, a lot of people came to the conclusion initially, many in the cybersecurity world at least, uh, that that meant that the CrowdStrike issue was caused by Microsoft, that this all stemmed back to Microsoft. Um, not, no one is certain of that anymore. So we're hearing this name a bit, CrowdStrike. Just quickly tell us what that is. Yeah, CrowdStrike is a cybersecurity company that has a significant share of the market globally. They provide anti antivirus uh, services, but, you know, I guess broader threat analysis for large businesses as well. They're really shot through the entire digital ecosystem. Um, and there's no doubt that they do feed back into each other, these companies, because, of course, Microsoft is, um, is, is so ubiquitous as well. Um, and, you know, as evidence of that, when we saw Microsoft services, um, we, we did see Microsoft services rather dip again around the same time that the CrowdStrike issue started to turn up. So they are related. We just don't know how yet. And they could be, as I say, uh, a, a big coincidence. And it may be days, weeks or months before we're able to untangle it. We've had a number of hacks in recent times, people concerned about their online security. Is there any indication that this has been malicious? No indication so far that this has been malicious in much the same way as it's far too early to say which, you know, which chicken <laughs> caused the egg. Um, or, yeah, anyway, uh, it's, it's too early to say whether or not this is a, a, a threat actor. And in, in fact, it seems that there's, um, there's no indication of that at this stage. It does sound like this is one of the biggest, if not the biggest, outage we've seen ever. 
It's completely unprecedented historically. They've never seen anything on this scale. In fact, never seen anything even close. Uh, and really what this does is it highlights the risk of what they call in the industry market consolidation, which is a fancy way of saying too much of the global economy relying on too few tech companies, just a handful for critical services. Um, and yeah, it will, be, it will be a long recovery is what I'm hearing because these things are, are painstaking to respond to. We know that around the country right now, services have had to be shut down, payment systems are down, people have had to leave work early. Mm. Is there a timeline on a fix? Look, I, I wouldn't say there's... I wouldn't be prepared to hazard one after the day that we've had. But there's no sign that one's imminent? Well, look, the interesting thing is that CrowdStrike has uh, rolled out what's called a workaround for this. Um, so that's, you know, an early fix and it's showing some promising signs already, but it is early days still. Uh, and if you look around at the, the live status reports of Microsoft's cloud services, Azure, around the world, they do seem to be business as usual. Um, that said, the impacts within businesses could, uh, could, could play out for much longer. for a while. Angela Voipier, our national technology reporter, thank you so much. Well, this isn't just a national crisis here in Australia. The impact of this incident is being felt around the globe. Our correspondent Michelle Rimmer joins us now from London. Michelle, give us a sense of how crippling this has been in Europe and the UK. Well, this part of the world has only just woken up to news of this global IT outage, so the full impact of these technical issues is still being realised. Here in the UK, trains, planes and some supermarket checkouts have been affected. Hospitals and GP surgeries are only treating the most urgent cases because they're unable to access medical records, so they're returning to pen and paper. The London Stock Exchange is unable to publish its regular news service, and one of the country's major broadcasters Sky News has been forced off air. Now, in Europe more broadly, there are airports in Spain and also in Germany that are reporting issues. They're also returning to manual services. Poland's uh, main shipping container terminal has said that it is struggling and the Paris Olympic Committee has released a statement saying that it's been affected. However, it has contingency plans in place so everything is on track for the opening ceremony in just a week's time. Michelle, what about the rest of the world? Are we seeing similar impacts elsewhere? Yeah, again, it really is airports that we're seeing the most uh, significant disruptions globally. Uh, we've had in Hong Kong emergency procedures activated at their international airport. Uh, some airlines in Japan, in India and New Zealand have also said that they're experiencing delays and that they've returned to manual operations in an attempt to keep flights running. They're encouraging passengers to arrive hours in advance just to make sure that they can get through these manual procedures. While in the US, the country uh, main airline, American Airlines, it's issued a global ground stop notice, which means that no new flights are able to take off, and that's been replicated at carriers around the United States, including Delta. So we're seeing major chaos at some of these transport hubs globally.